Welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. Today I'll be doing a owner gutter slash boxer splint, non-removable using ortho glass. This particular uh, injury is focused in the hand. They may have a metacarpal fracture in a fifth or fourth, but we're gonna include these two fingers in the particular splint. With that being said, the position we're gonna concentrate on is having that wrist in 20 to 30 degrees of extension, and at the metacarpal phalangeal joint, we'll have that extended either from 45 degrees to 90 degrees of flexion, depending on the physician's preference. Because these fingers are gonna to be together for such a long time, either in a splint or a cast, we're going to concentrate on making sure we put some pad in between the fingers to decrease the likelihood of macerated skin and pad the bony prominences in between. It's imperative that when we do this particular splint on the patient, that we have the fingers side by side, not toppled over each other. Like in a rotational situation, we do not want that. And after we're done, we're gonna secure it in the palmar area to make sure we take away all the extra space on the volar and dorsal sides to keep that reduction if it was done, the bones that were put back in alignment, in conjunction there. So we'll hold that firm once we're done and keep those fingers down. Now, before I even do that, I'll be concentrating on getting that position. So once I have the splint on, all I will do is just tilt the patient's hand back. And one thing that you'll notice is that when you tilt a patient's hands back, they're gonna have wrinkles in that area. So I'll use a thinner aspect of my hand to keep the wrinkles from forming too much on the splint. So I'll do that to keep the, the splint from forming too many wrinkles. This is an extremely painful splint to apply on the patient. So you need to be quick, but gentle at the same time. And we can use the injured extremity without any fear of causing the patient a whole bunch of pain and discomfort. I'll measure it from the tip of the pinky finger. And then I'll go proximal, the dimensions that I need for the patient. You can bend them up to 90 degrees and you can see where you will stop your splint. So that's my measurement. Again, you can use a tape measure if you want to. So let's go ahead and put some stockinette on or you don't have to use stockinette, but if they have an extra swelling, then you may not even want to do that. It depends on what the provider may want. So let's put this on the patient. And you can put the padding between the fingers now if you want to, but that's kind of cumbersome when the patient try to keep their fingers together at the same time. So just go ahead and you can put the stockinette on first. All right. So let's put some padding between the fingers. And when we apply the padding to the fingers, you just need maybe two layers. And we wanna make sure that, and you know, let me cut this down just a little bit more. We don't put the padding between the fingers. All we need is maybe two layers. There we have it. So now when we put that splint on, we can see the distal end of the tip of the fifth and see the uh, ring finger. Let's put our padding on. And let's go ahead and start with the roll to the sky this way or this way. And as we apply the padding, be conscious that you're gonna go through the really acute area of the hand and we have to take care of the fingers. So you gotta move around the hand a little bit and it may be very uncomfortable for the patient. So I'll start at the wrist, go to the hand and the fingers, then work my way back down. I'm gonna tear this in the web space so I can get between the web space a little bit easier. Now let's take care of the fingers. So I'll go distal. And I'll let you guys see what I'm doing here. I'm going to tear it. Look at this finger here. I'm gonna tear it along that edge there. And then I'll so hold that in place and slip between the fingers. Go around the fifth finger. Be careful to leave a little bit of the tip of the finger showing so you'll know how far to put your splint. And then do that again to have a minimum of two layers of padding. All 
All right, so we got that patty on the fingers. Now let's work our way down. Now, as I work my way down, I'm going to do what we call a 50-50 coverage with the padding. That's every revolution around, I'm covering 50% of what I just put on. Now, some people sometimes ask, hey, why are you pulling that off a certain way? Well, I wanna make sure everything is smooth as possible. I'm gonna add some more to it because I wanna get all the way down on the extremity. Now, as you put your padding on, you wanna make sure that you don't leave what we call shadows where there's one layer there. So if you see that, then you just go ahead and cover some more of it up with more padding. There is an option if you want to put more padding around the thumb. This is a three inch type of padding. So I can just go ahead and tear some of that off. Fold this down like such and just tear it just a little bit. Go around the thumb in a crisscross fashion. Some people even make it longer so they can cover certain bony prominences as they go around. Now I have that there and you can secure it by poking a hole through some more padding, such, and do one of these notions here. Now we're ready to go. We have the padding between the fingers and we got our stocking head here. And what we can do is either fold this up now, like that, or we can wait till we put our splint on and then cover the splint up a little bit on the edge. So let's get our splint ready. I'll be using a four inch on this particular patient. And it's important that you cover the fourth and fifth metacarpal heads on both sides. So you wanna make sure that it goes all around that whole area so most patients will not need a three inch. You would usually use a four inch or a five inch on most adult patients. So cut that and then immediately close your package up. And we're gonna just do that by just pushing it back down inside of the packaging and making a nice crease there that's smooth, no wrinkles there and use an upside down T portion of the closer and put that inside of that crease, close that down and we have that secured so the air won't get in here to activate the product. So I have my splint here and let's go ahead and get this prepared. So again, I like to go ahead and cut mine. Again, you can pull it if you want to pull the padding, but I like to cut mine get my orthoglass scissors and I'll cut down the product. And you can notice that it has a nice little deep long padding edge, okay? So what I have here is you can see that I have the nice padding edge, okay? And there's different ways you can modify this. This is just one particular way. You don't need that much water, but one thing you do wanna do is roll it up on itself so you can activate the product thoroughly. You wanna go ahead and just squeeze that out over the sink. We have you get all the extra water out of the padding. Now just unroll that and then put that in a towel and then get all the extra wetness off of the padding itself. Now I have that taken care of, but I still wanna take care of my edges one more time to make sure that I have fully extended the padding. So just check your little edges and such. Now, when I fold this down, I'll do just like this and put that around the fourth and fifth finger, okay? Now there's a little seam here that can throw you off, there's no splint product there. So you wanna make sure you center your splint on the fourth and fifth on both sides. So make sure you notice that there's a seam there, okay? 
So some people just fold this in half so they can make sure that when they put it on the patient and they take out the seam so that they won't get thinking that that's a splint product. Two inch will work well for this just so you can go around the fingers fairly easy. So let's get this patient in position. So I'll secure that, hold that there. You can do me a favor and put your hand right there, okay? And I'll start by going around the wrist. And then I'll go all the way up to the hand. If you can see through, you're more than likely you're pulling the elastic bandage too much. Okay, you can let go there. Okay. So secure that, hold that in place, pull it toward the fingers, and then go in between those fingers there. Do it again. Then I work my way down. Smooth it down as you go. Now I'm gonna finish this off with the extra elastic bandage. You have a choice here with the extra that's left over. You can either cut it off and tape it, or you can go ahead and finish it off by going distally, but just don't pull too much. You don't wanna have any pulling of fluid distally. And grab the hand, put one hand at the articulation area of the wrist, and using this portion of your hand, the thinner eminence there, as we slowly get the patient back into the extension that we need, 20 to 30 degrees of extension, then we rub that area on the backside so we can make sure that no wrinkles are forming. And now all we have to do is get the fingers down in 45 degrees or up to 90 degrees of flexion, depending on what the provider wants. So now since we have the patient's extremity and extension um, wrist, now let's get the fingers down. So we're going to just press down, and when we press down, we're going to make sure we press at the proximal base of the fingers, not around the tips of the fingers. We do not want the joint flexed in the middle. Now, as you can see, I'm pressing that down. This can be very uncomfortable for the patient, so you don't want to go back and forth, teeter-tottering their hand back and forth. So you want to do it in one fell swoop. So get the hand, grab the wrist, tilt them back, and then move the fingers down at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. You notice that I'm not resting my fingers on her whole hand. I do not want the patient to have a hook-like look on their fingers by lip resting my fingers on their whole hand. So if you turn this to the side, you can see the position I'm trying to get. I'm gonna flex them down and you can kind of keep it just like that for me. And if I need to get them further down, I'll get this portion of my hand and move it further down to get more flexion. At the same time, keep my extension of my wrist. After maybe 30 to 40 seconds, then I'll keep my hand on top of the fingers, but move my other hand and take away this space that's in here and around the hand, because I want to take away all the space here to ensure that there's no articulation. You will hold that position for at least three to five minutes until it's set or even longer, depending on the patient's maturity where they won't try to move around and lose that position that you tried to get that patient in. After I'm done, I wanna make sure that this area here around the distal palmar crease, it feels really smooth and it's angled exactly how I want it to be without wrinkles. The next thing we want to do is make sure the fingers are side by side still. Okay, so go ahead and look at the hand itself to make sure that the fingers are side by side. We don't want the fingers topple or rotated over each other. Okay. 
after we get done with that, we'll take all the extra bandage away off that side. There's nothing wrong with it. Secure this, open this up over the thumb. And just some key things. This is extremely uncomfortable for the patient. So you need to work expeditiously to get it on and get them in position so that you have time to form the splint. Our position that we really concentrated on is about 15 to 30 degrees for the wrist extension, and then 45 to up to 90 degrees of flexion at the metacarpal phalangea joint. We concentrate on making sure the fingers were not rotated over each other, and we also had padding between the fingers. That's important. We want to prevent any maceration of the skin and pad the bony promises. So also, when you're securing the fingers, you don't want to buddy tape the fingers. That's where you put tape on the end and at the base of the fingers underneath the splint during the emergency room setting. It's okay at different times, but in the emergency room setting, you may not want to do that since they're going through that inflammation stage where their fingers are really swollen and you do not want to add a more tourniquet effect inside of the splint. So avoid that. So again, that was the uh, boxer owner gutter splint using orthoglass non-removable so the patient cannot take it off. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding DeltaCast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.